Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. My name is Nick. And I'm Ian. And this week we're going to be answering a question that was asked, I don't know, probably about a month or so back by one of our viewers. So this is a question, I don't know, probably about a month or so back. Uh, it's actually like a multi-part question. It uh, is from J.D. Thompson. I don't remember the exact video this is from. I think it was from my mail time video where I opened up one of my, uh, I think it was when I did the uh, MXPX live album or their Life in Quarantine album. I think is what it was from. But anyway, he said, this is from J.D. Thompson. He said, uh, I'll even put it up on the screen here. He said, uh, maybe you can do a video on how to clean your albums, how, how you clean your albums, uh, inner sleeves, outer sleeves you use, and which end you leave open, and how you inventory and arrange your collection on the shelves. It's interesting to see people's processes and get ideas, which is actually a really, it's, it's very true, because I know that uh, one of the channels I watch on a pretty regular basis, um, Channel 33 RPM, Frank, I'm sure a lot of you guys watch the, the show, uh, every once in a while he'll do like a Vinyl Dens episode where I'll kind of go over people's setups and things like that. And I've gotten a lot of great ideas from there. Uh, so I definitely do like those kind of videos also. Um, you know, I'll say, as far as like cleaning my records go, I'm not one of those people that cleans all the time. I, I generally, if I get an album and it comes, if I get a brand new album or even a used album and it comes in those like paper sleeves, I generally kind of give it a quick wipe down if it's mm -hmm. like really dirty, but I'm going to be completely honest. If it's not, and if it looks pretty clean, I normally just pull it out and put it in an anti-static sleeve and I really don't clean it unless it really needs it. All right. For me, it's the same thing. If it, it's, even with new albums, especially you'll get like little particulates on there when you yeah. open it up. It's especially with those cheap paper sleeves. Yeah. You know? And even, even if they're not, even if it's regular, like sometimes they'll come with static sleeves, but it just seems to me like, especially like the last, say, year or so, every time I bought a new album, I've had to just do a, a quick wipe down yeah. when I first put it on. You know, an old, a used album is going to be hit or miss no matter what, but a lot of the new ones that I've bought, you know, brand new, I just do a quick wipe down yeah. whenever I, I before I play them because I don't want that stuff damaging yeah. my needle. Or I, I know a lot of people use those spin cleans and there's a lot of other things they use. I, myself, I stick to this right here. This is the groove washer. This is a kit you can get off on the website. It's, you know, I want to say like 60 bucks. I know a lot of times they run promos where you get 10% off. I know if you if you guys listen to the Vinyl Guide uh, podcast, he a lot of times will have a 10% 10, 10 off code on his, on his uh, you know, during his commercials and things like that where you can get a discount on this. But this is a great, like, manual kit. comes with a great little uh, uh, brush, it's a bunch of cleaner. You know, it's just, like I said, it's... it's I think it's the best handheld cleaning system out there. Yeah, and it's definitely one I want to get, but usually I just bring my records over and have him clean them. Yeah. So. You can't do that, ladies and gentlemen. Another thing I kind of got into just recently, and it's something I didn't do a lot, like I said, I didn't even think about until just recently. You know, I, I guess I shouldn't say I didn't think about it. People, I have read people talking about it, and it, uh, it was one of these. It's just an anti-static brush. It... it, it I think it was really just this winter because I'm down here in my basement and uh, there's generally not a lot of static down there, but uh, I've got a dehumidifier down here now. So I think it dries up the air a little more. It's a little more static down there this year. So then this, these things are pretty cheap. It's like 10, 12 bucks, something like that. So this is definitely one thing I do whenever I pull the record out. I just do a quick anti-static rub on there and it, it definitely helps clean up the, the, the any kind of like background crackle or hiss or anything like that because there's a lot of static electricity that builds up especially especially if you're using like a uh a felt platter mat those things are great for collecting uh static electricity so this is definitely a a cheap and easy thing you can use so as far as like inner and outer sleeves go it's this is another thing that i didn't really do a lot when i first got back into collecting records um you know i was kind of it was probably at least six or eight months till I finally was like, hey, I should probably do something to, mm -hmm. a little bit to at least try to protect my investment. And uh, there's really three kind of main um, sleeves that I use. I think you really only use one. I've kind of, don't moved you? to just one, yeah. So you got like your, your standard your, your standard open top sleeve, which these are, you can get a bundle of these from pretty cheap from kind of any record store. Um, you know, and, and they're kind of like you're just run-of-the-mill sleeves. Um, 
Another one is, now the ones I generally get are from a company up in Canada called Vinyl Storage Solutions. Mm -hmm. Vinyl Storage Solutions. And uh, I'll put a link down below if you want to check out their website. They've got a bunch of great sleeves on there. And I've really gotten into the resealable ones. And I will say that they've changed their resealable sleeves. These things, I, I love putting the my, my records in these. Because like I said, it, it keeps any kind of dust or dirt out of the sleeve. And they were having issues where, like some of their older sleeves, you would have a really hard time opening up because i know you bought yeah, a i bought some and i didn't like the way they opened up yeah they, they're they're really hard to reopen their newer sleeves i haven't had any problems reopening up. yeah they, op they open up beautifully yeah. they reseal but these are great because i love the other thing i love doing is i love keeping my records separate from the album so these dual pocket sleeves from uh from uh, vinyl storage solutions are perfect for that and so that's kind of the main sleeve I use, that dual pocket resealable. But they've got a couple of different, or they've had a couple of different interior sleeves. This is the one I really like, but uh, it's not the best for showcasing colored vinyl. Uh, you know, it's a great anti-static sleeve. It's sealed on the bottom. It's got a flap right here. So it keeps any kind of dust or debris from entering the sleeve when you slide it in the back. Um, you know, it's great protection, but they stopped selling these on their website and they've moved to a different sleeve, which I could show you somewhere. If I'll knock all my records off the table in front of me. So this is, like I said, this is the same kind of, um, you know, anti-static protective sleeve, out outer sleeve, but these are the new interior sleeves they have. And like I said, for showcasing colored vinyl, they're beautiful because they're crystal clear. Mm -hmm. As you can see, it's a great color on that record. Mm -hmm. So those are the, the inside, the inner and outer sleeves that that I use. You really don't haven't gotten into inner sleeves yet, have you? Not really. I've got I've got a bundle of duals, okay, or dual sleeves where I could do that, um, where I you know separate everything and and do that. I haven't done anything with inner sleeves though. Yeah, um, I know that if if you are looking to get inner inner sleeves, and you don't want to go through because the ones from. Vinyl storage solutions, they can be a little pricey. I think that anything over 36 or $38 Something like that, yeah. from their website, they ship for free. Um, but I know you can get a pack of like 25, I'm sorry, there's a pack of 50 of the MoFi inner sleeves, which I know a lot of people like those. You get them off of Amazon for like 25 bucks. Oh, so not it's, it's, not, it's not too bad. But I want to say a 20, a, 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 I think it's a 25 or a 50 pack. Uh, that's roughly the same price for these. I don't remember how how big the package comes. Right. But, uh, and, they, and they probably have options. Because like, I think when are, I ordered mine, so th there was like 25, and then you can get a 50 count or whatever. Too. These are yeah, that's right. These are 20. These are 25 count packages. I want to say they were like 12 or 14 bucks, something like yeah, that. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah. So the second part of the sleeve aspect of the question uh, was asking what side we leave open. You know, I tend to do the top. Um, but I do have some bigger albums that don't necessarily fit really well in the sleeves. Uh, so there is a couple of them I've had to turn sideways. The issue I run into, though, is, you know, if you have, let me pull this out. If you put it in there sideways and then slide it into the shelf, it has a tendency to bunch up mm -hmm. and push the album out of it. Mm -hmm. So I have had issues like that before, and that's why I've gone to those resealable sleeves because um, Vinyl Storage Solutions has a 13-inch uh, sleeve also, so for bigger albums. Which so a lot of standard albums are coming pretty thick now. Yeah. Because you get a double a double album, and, and they're both 180 gram, it's it's a lot thicker, and it, yeah. sometimes you have a trouble s sliding it in there. But see, with something like that, I, I get I get that. But I think if you turn it around, where, because I obviously you're always spine out. If the spine is what's exposed, is and you push it in, it's it's gonna it's still gonna slide. Yeah. You know, so it won't it won't bunch up as bad because that's how I would do it if I was gonna do the standards. Um, I'd have the spine pointing out a little easier to read because you don't have to look at it through the through the seal. And it, it also keeps the dust out better that way, too. The thing is with that, though, is a lot of people like having it where 
the album opens on the end here, mm-hmm. so they don't have to keep pulling the album in and out of the sleeve. They turn the this is true, they yeah. put the album where they can just slide the album straight out of it. Right. Yeah. You know, so that when you slide it in there, unless you have my like my, my the albums I have up here now aren't really bunched in there really tight. I try not so, to do that either. Yeah, which you really shouldn't. But no. uh, so I, I guess I could do it like that. But uh, I don't know. I just like having mine open at the top just to kind of pull them out. And that makes sense. Like if you, if you, a lot, of, I know back in the day people would buy their records, and you know it's sealed, but they would just open up one edge. Yeah. So they could just pull the record out, and that way it would still have the cellophane plastic on it. Yeah. Um, I know some people would do that. It, it was I wouldn't say it was the most popular way, but some people would do that yeah. too. So. so as far as like inventorying and arranging my collection, um, you know, as far as inventorying, I really rely on Discogs. Ian, not so much. <laughs> well, I do. I just am very lazy about yeah. updating I'm, I'm it. I'm very meticulous about making sure I have all my albums labeled in there correctly. Mm-hmm. And um, Oh, yeah. I do it I do it correctly. Just, I've got a crap ton of albums that I have not updated yeah. into my Discogs list yet. So, yeah, I definitely rely on that for as far as inventorying. As far as arranging my albums, I do mine by... Uh, it's alphabetical by artist last name if it's a... You know, Tom Petty or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I always go by last name. There's a lot of people that have really interesting ways how they categorize theirs. I've seen some people online that do theirs by genre. But the issue I have with that is if there's a band out there that has a 30 plus year career, they've got they albums that really different. Yeah, different they, genres. they've got albums that touch different genres. Like, how do you classify the Bee Gees? Would you classify well, them as... Well, it depends, because they're like their si- late 60s stuff, you'd classify as almost uh, singer-songwriter, oh, I, folky. Like, a lot of their later 60s stuff, I would actually say is closer to, like, the, some of the stuff that the Beatles were doing. Yeah. You know, in the late Plus, 60s. Like, yeah, like, like, yeah, like folky rock. I'm yeah, saying, but you know? it's vastly different from the disco stuff that they were doing in the 70s. So how do you classify an L- artist like that? Do you have... Their albums in multiple genres, which I guess you would have which to. Which I couldn't do that. I, no, I, I, I don't want to break up my collection. Right. <laughs> I'm not OCD to that extent, but I'm weirdly OCD on certain things. And I, yeah, I could never have half of an artist catalog over here and half of it over here. Yeah. I could never do that. And then all my like soundtracks and things like that, my 10-inch, I keep all at the end of my collection. And then, of course, I've got a box over by my turntable with all my 45s. I don't have a big 45 collection but yeah, uh I've, I've got a small box i keep all those in mine's growing a little bit but i still i think i only have about five yeah so. there's d- there's definitely some albums that i'm not able to buy on on vinyl you know older older albums that haven't been repressed but i could get some of the songs i love off those albums on 45s so i've gone i've done that with a couple of different things but um you know, I guess when it comes to 45s, I'm just kind of lazy. I don't like having to flip the album. You know, I don't mind it because so I do it for the same reason. It's like sometimes there's an artist that has one song you like, and if it's on a 45, that's what I'm going to do. I'm yeah. going to buy that. So There's an album that I absolutely love by Less Than Jake. It's called Hello Rock View. It's probably my favorite ska punk album. You know, it, to get it, to get the full 12-inch, you're going to pay 100 150 bucks for that. I was able to get the full album on 45s for like 35 bucks i got it for a great steal i, I want to say you can still get it off discogs for between 50 and 60 bucks and the so packaging is really cool it is kind of cool there, but yeah. it's, you know it's an entire album on, and 45 45s, on 45s. Yeah. so yeah two songs at a time yeah so my organization is uh, right now is basic alphabetized just like you know you were talking about but i've been thinking about doing it by I guess like subgenre almost. Yeah. So like I would have like my progressive rock bands in one section alphabetized, and then I do like my hair metal slash metal section, which so like, like a combination of yeah. Of I mean, not, I wouldn't be so specific about the genres, but you know, I would have obviously Ozzy and Alice and Sabbath would be kind of together. Um, and I might even include like some of the '80s hair band stuff, like yeah. Guns N' Roses and stuff like that. But then I'll have my folky stuff together, like my Cat Stevens and my Decemberists, and you know, kind of 
separated just for fun. You know, I was kind that's, of feeling that's, a little, I mean, it's definitely a diff- interesting yeah. way to, to categorize. But alphabetized within those groups, you know. Yeah. Uh, I was looking at it as a way to also update my disguise listing because I could do that while I was organizing yeah. it. But again, I'm, I'm, I'm lazy, so it'll take a long time. <laughs> when it's done, I'll let you know, but it's going to take a while. Well, that's all we got for you this week. Uh, you know, thanks for checking the show out. If you guys have more questions, definitely drop a comment down below and, and let us know. We're we're definitely open and we're definitely open up to uh, to answering any kind of questions Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Yep. Any questions? Bring them on. That's uh, it's, if you haven't noticed, that's one thing I at least enjoy is talking. So <laughs> I yes. do enough of it. Yes. Oh, yes. But <laughs> but if you enjoy the episode, make sure you definitely give us the old thumbs up. Hit the subscribe button down below. Make sure you check out our Facebook group. There's a link down below for that also. Mm-hmm. You know what else they're supposed to do? Hit the notification bell. Ding, ding. Ding, ding. I do like the old school bell. It's because you're old. <laughs> I am old. but <laughs> <laughs> We're all old. Well, that's all we got. Until next time. Talk to y'all later. Keep on spinning. Peace. <laughs>